Welcome. I forgot to light my cozy night, cozy nights candle. Cozy night. Yeah, it's called cozy nights. Oh. It's not cozy up here without it. And my day of the dead blanket. Yeah, cozy nights by. Uh, oh God, I don't know, but that flame's pretty high. All right, turn lights. <laughs> what are we doing? Wow, it's Christmas season, but it's holiday season. It's also World Cup season. It was a little sad to see the Netherlands lose. Um, sad times. Um, what time is Canada playing? Come on. Ah, that's right. What time is the United States playing? Oh, that's right. Losers, losers. But I'll tell you what, Lay's potato chips, speaking of the World Cup, they have the official USA snack of the World Cup. This is a wavy carnita street tacos flavored Lay's. And you know my feeling, first of all, the reason I like Lay's, Lay's is because they're not wavy, but I can go with it. <laughs> then you just shouldn't ruin perfection, but truth be told, I already ate one of these. They're great. Oh. If you see these, it's got a soccer ball on it. Yep. Lay's Wavy Cornetus Street Tacos. Doesn't sound like something I'd normally go for, but I love it. Great. What am I drinking? Well, from running, <clears throat> running down to Missouri to my brother's house, I got this public house ale, cream ale. It's from St. James, Missouri, um, and the only reason I bought it is because on the can, there's a blue bear. It looks like a grizzly bear, but it's blue. It has red sunglasses on and green headphones, and he's spinning records. <laughs> so if anybody ever wonders, hey, does the marketing really work for dumb people? Yep. 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a winner. It's a cream ale, and it's delicious, and it is followed by, I am, well, I haven't poured it yet. So I went to my neighbor's house, Jeff and Debbie, or Jebby as I like to call them. <laughs> um, and they had this Evan Williams eggnog. Now, normally eggnog, I'm like, eh, you know, a taste shake of it. it. Shake it. Shake it? Yeah. Well, I didn't see anybody shake the bottle it over says there. says that on giant letters. Shake before. Where? Everywhere. No, it doesn't. Try it. No. There's nowhere to shake it. There's no room. There's not. It's all been, it's too packed in there. It gets the spices out of the bottle. The spices, whatever. Oh this... God was delicious. Yeah. And I'm not the biggest eggnog person, but I'm saying be careful, termites. Don't get into too many of them. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. And I think she put nutmeg on top or yeah. something. Nutmeg is Cinnamon, maybe? I don't know. But if you see the Evan Williams, I don't really even like the Evan Williams whiskey per se. No. It's not my thing. It's got a bite, a very hard bite, yeah. It's like stuff you. I would think people in Westerns would walk into a bar and shoot it a hot shot gross. and then walk out, and they're already hot, and everybody's gross and sweaty. But uh, the this product they make, I love. So that's my holiday recommendation, Evan Williams Eggnog. Yeah, let's see. It's a Southern holiday... Southern holiday tradition made even better with Evan Williams bourbon. Shake well, refrigerate... Oh, I don't think my sister could have this. There's a lot of things going on that the glutards would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really have any more. It's 15% alcohol, so it's 30 proof. Babies can have it. Made with Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, blended whiskey, rum, and brandy. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That is a delicious holiday treat. If Santa had that, Santa would be going nowhere, and no <laughs> one would get anything. That's what I'm drinking. So we tried those chips. We're going to try these, too. These are not in favor. These are not because of the World Cup. They're just hers, creamy ranch, and habanera potato chips. A gas station purchase, if you will. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Gluten-free. Thank God. There you go. Well, my sister, no matter what, I get out of the cabinet or whatever. She'll go, I can't eat that. Well, okay. So I'm trying to build a whole gluten-free area of this house. And then when it's time to eat, I go, you just go over there by yourself. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and sit with your gluten sit with yourself. intolerance. Mm. <laughs> These are really good. Hers is the East Coast, right? Pennsylvania? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. These, These are hot, too. You need toes in there. Kind of yeah. Well, I was wondering, I can't remember where I got everything. Nottingham, PA. Way to go, Pennsylvania. You're bringing it. What am I? What am I looking at right here? Well, termites. I um, was selected 
to go to the Southern Illinois University Edwardsville Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of other people, but they're so smart, I didn't even understand their resumes. <laughs> like, they printed their bio, and I'm like, what? What do you do? Science people, math people. I'm the only one that's, let's put it this way, and this could apply to hookers. I'm the only one working hard on weekends. Everybody else in that brochure that got into the Hall of Fame was available for the dinner. I'm like, hey, 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 why don't you have it on a Monday so the circus crowd can come, right? I can't come on a Friday or Saturday. I'm working, but it was very sweet. And they sent me a little note and uh, this sweatshirt. It's I'm going to shrink it. It says SI. Every time people go, oh, my God, you went to SIU, the Salukis? I'm like, no, there's another SIU. <laughs> yeah. They're called the Cougars. We are the Cougars. <laughs> we are not the ones usually. It's more of a commuter deal. You know, it's what I could afford. And I got a good job out of it after college. And um, my main goal, and I said this when I met with a counselor, and I don't think the person really appreciated my sense of humor. She said, um, so what are your main goals that you'd like to achieve here at SIU Edwardsville? Oh, no. And I said... Well, I drive here from St. Louis every day, and my goal is to not hit a deer. <laughs> because it's a serious event when it happens. It can ruin your car. It can kill you. It can kill the deer. It's sad for everybody. That's my goal, lady. That's my goal. Um, so, yeah, she wasn't amused at all. Uh, so, anyway, thanks to SIUE, and you know what? Uh, if you don't have the giant money for the fun school, may I recommend SIUE if you're on a budget, nice. right? I'm not going to say it's a discount school. That sounds like it's cheap. Education on a budget. Education on a budget and more attention. And one of the biggest reasons I picked it is the brochure said ample parking. And I was running from University of Missouri where I had probably $2,000 in parking tickets. Never did pay them. So if anybody wants to come after me for that. But that was back in the old days and there's no records of it now. All right. Let me, let me say this. Congratulations on your Congratulations. I'm happy with it. And they gave me a, a, you know, a water bottle deal. Uh, they're coming along, SIUE. Uh, yeah, so if you're a St. Louis person or a Southern Illinois person, you know, consider them. You can, That's you can wear that, and then you can on a blue day you wear your butler shirts. Yeah, I could wear my butler shirts. Um, the butler one's got the bulldog on it. I wish this cougar one had a cougar. Yeah. It just says cougar. You may want to. Wow. I'm also trying this sweet baby Ray's garlic parmesan. Uh, I'm dev- I don't know sweet baby Ray's. Why do I not know this? Where's it's from Chicago. Oh, is this is garlic parmesan. I've been on a honey mustard kick lately. I refer to my old old album if you want to hear that joke. Uh, but wow, good. Yeah, anything parmesan, it's gonna be a winner. Yeah, that's a super winner. Holy shit! I mean, what are you supposed to do with this? Are you ranched out? Now you're into honey. Garlic mustard. parmesan sauce and marinade. Oh, it's for wings, grilled chicken, pizza, shrimp. Why can't it be on a salad? They forgot that. Nobody eats salad in the Midwest. Certainly not my father. That's for sure. And if he does, it's covered in so much Roquefort, you don't even see lettuce anymore. Do you have Roquefort and Waverly Waver crackers? Thank you. If not, I'll be leaving this establishment. Okay, talking about so many things. So much queen news. Cher's mom died. I know. Sad times, right? Sad. Um, yeah. She was 96, though. I mean, what do we want out of people? Right, that you have a 36-year-old boyfriend. Change your focus. Yeah. Mom has gone away. I mean, I feel sad for Cher because I think they were super close, yeah. which sucks. But at the, at, the, at the other end of the spectrum here, at some point, people, yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, sad times for Cher. But you're right. She has a brand-new 36-year-old boy. Look over here. Ha, shiny toy. He's 36, and he just thinks you're yeah. wonderful. Um, Stevie, next praised Lizzo, Stevie's over here, for her stunning acceptance speech at the People's Choice Awards. So at the People's Choice Awards, Lizzo got up. I like Lizzo. I like anybody who can play a classical instrument. To just blow that flute away is just insane. It's crazy. Because to me, that was the smart kids. And then I respect them for being smart. Because I would have been the one, like, damn it, drum! (laughs) 
I can hit. I mean, or um, the you know the the kid that thinks you're going to be in a rock band. Yes, I can play the guitar because I thought I could be Nancy Wilson. Yeah. But that's where I aimed. I didn't aim for like Bach or Mozart. I'm like, what's it take to be Ted Nugent? <laughs> Sammy Hagar, the Red Rocker. <laughs> My God, every I th- I would I would love to meet Sammy Hagar just one time to go. How much money did you make in St. Louis? Right. Because it seemed like he was there every other Friday, and the rock station in St. Louis would always go, "Oh, St. Louis, we got a big concert announcement on Friday morning. Tune in to win your tickets." And then Friday morning, this is it, St. Louis, the Red Rocker returns, yeah. and people would be like, "Yes." People have cities. I have cities that I always sell more tickets in than other cities, and who knows why? I don't know. Dallas, great for me. D.C., great for me. It's usually D's. Denver and Detroit. Probably the cities I sell the most tickets in. Why? I have no idea. St. Louis. Well, St. Louis is home, though. That don't count. That's home field advantage. But, like, Sammy Hagar was not from St. Louis. It just didn't. I don't know. We just really liked him. Anyway, I admired Lizzo because she went for the instrument that's not the cool, you know, it's not like, it's like hard. It's beautiful, but it's hard. So Lizzo got her award and she brought up like 17 advocates on stage and she let them all speak about the things they're advocating for instead of taking the award. And she introduced them and a thing about what they do. And then Stevie wrote, should I read it in my Stevie voice? Yes. Yes. In my opinion, your presentation last night on the People's Choice Awards was not only so beautiful and so needed that you get the award for being a great woman of our time. (laughs) I was so impressed and touched that you put together and pulled it off. It was stunning, and everyone heard you. You have given all women sound bites forever. Flute player, singer, songwriter, future politician. I like that Stevie saw it. You know, she seems so ethereal. Are you really watching the People's Choice Awards? Well, I don't see Stevie doing that. But maybe somebody sent her the clip and said, hey, here's your, here's your friend Lizzo. Here's your BFF Lizzo. Um, there was some other. Oh, Tanya. Tanya Tucker's Christmas movie. A Nashville country Christmas. How, much, how do you rate it? I rate it A+. Plus for what it was. Great. She's a wonderful little actor. I don't think anybody's probably ever told her that. Uh, the story, I could tell you the premise, little left field. Um, <laughs> it's not what I was thinking was going to happen. Um, her mom has a house somewhere in Tennessee. Her mom's dead. Outside of Nashville. Outside of Nashville, of course. <laughs> and um, she goes home to tend to it. She just wants a little time out. Turns out there's orphans living in it. Oh, no. <laughs> who's going to adopt them? No, who's going to adopt them? Who's going to come home and come to your right goddamn mind yeah. and sit here like a normal person and do not go with those evil L.A. people? No, no you will not go to California. Yeah, you will get back to your Tennessee, <laughs> and then you're going to fall in love with the old guy at the diner who you ran away from because you thought he was having an affair, and he wasn't having an affair. Anyway. Um no, you don't know if she takes him or not. Does she stay in Tennessee? I don't know. You got to watch it. CMT. CMT, baby. I really did like it. I was really shocked, too. She's a very good actor. Because sometimes they take the country people and just make them do stuff, and then it's like, oh, that was kind of embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Not embarrassing at all. Nope. And not that poorly written. Nope. I mean, and I can say that about this year, um, well, speaking of that, I got another one about... We're going to talk about these holiday movies. As a matter of fact, we'll do that first. Because okay. I don't have any other queen news. Um, Shaka's been Shaka quiet. Shaka may get kicked out. Well, Shaka is... I like that she just kicks back a lot. I would be That's Shaka out like of this group. Years. <laughs> right. Sometimes sometimes people yell at me and they go, You haven't had a special out since. But I'm like, Sharday Didn't have one for a decade. Nobody bitched at her. No. I'm just behind because of COVID, but I love that I can blame everything on COVID. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to have like five and then COVID and then, yeah, the jokes didn't make sense after that, so I just erased them. Um, well, okay, maybe I'd be Tanya. I wouldn't work as hard as Dolly. I know that. She gets up really early. 
I wouldn't work as much as Stevie at 75 years old. She's on the road. And she just added more Billy Joel dates. No. 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 She added two more arena. I'm not saying. I know a lot of people like Billy Joel. I like some of his songs. But you're taking time away from Stevie. She doesn't have enough energy. No 75-year-old could do that and then do your own tour at the same time. I'm going to have to wait. Till this shit's over. Mm-hmm. And then she might be dead. She's starving you out. She is starving me out. Yeah. Yeah, I do yeah. that to certain cities. <laughs> I don't tell them that, but I'm doing it. You got to start. You got to make them want you back. <laughs> Starve them out. It's to scorch earth uh, from Joseph Stalin right out of his playbook. <laughs> Scorched earth policy. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's what's weird. So basically in the Christmas movie category, you have, and if you hate this topic, just fast forward like five minutes. We got like Hallmark. Well, well, first Netflix got in the game. Hallmark started it all. Yes. Okay. Then and then, and then Hallmark Mysteries and Movies, and as we've talked about, in those you can drink and kiss. Kiss on the mouth. Kiss on the mouth. Yeah. Hallmark, generic Hallmark, nay, nay. A lot of hot cocoa. I'm shocked everybody doesn't weigh 7,000 pounds. That's all they do all goddamn day and night is that. Would you like some cocoa? I'm like, no, I'm not four. Where, do you have beer? Do you have wine? Do you have whiskey? How about Evan Williams eggnog? Hmm? Anybody? Um, so then Netflix got in the game. And I got to say, theirs are not good. And I don't know what happened to the royalty premise. I'd like a prince back again. I've seen all those. They're old. I like fake royalty. I like the cities they make up. Aldovia. It all sounds like my friend John Moldovan. Moldovia. <laughs> I'm going to ask Jim Moldovan if he has a secret kingdom somewhere. Um, yeah. Altuvia, which is actually after Altuve of the Houston Astros. Um, so then there's Hallmark, Hallmark Mystery Movie, Lifetime. They're my winner this year. Yeah. Theirs have been the best. And usually I look at Lifetime and think, nah, too slow. No, no, they have been the best if you're into it. I know a lot of people hate these things. Right. Then I saw this. We all know that Candace Creme Brulee quit the Hallmark and went to the Great American Family because she doesn't want the gays. Right. She wants traditional families. Christian values. Christian values. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. You know, do, do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. But then I saw Neil Bledsoe, and I'm looking at this picture going, is he related to Drew Bledsoe? This guy's an actor. Uh-huh. And Drew was a quarterback for the Patriots. Uh-huh. Retired. He's long since retired. But Neil Bledsoe announces departure from Great American Family after Candace Crembule's controversial remarks. <gasps> Whoa. So he's quitting. Is he gay? No, <laughs> he's not gay. He's very handsome. But he looks a lot like Drew, Drew Bledsoe. So I Googled it. They're fourth cousins. I mean, I don't even look this much like my first cousins. <laughs> And he looks like a hotter version of Drew. Drew Bradshaw always kind of looked like he might be asleep. He had those yeah. sleepy eyes. Like, yeah. not the sexy sleepy eyes. The, the just, eyes. I'm super tired or anemic <laughs> sleepy eyes. <laughs> this guy looks like a more awake Drew Bradshaw. Yeah. Very cute. Um, she may be considered by the queen of, to be the queen of Christmas movies, but Candace Creme Brulee, I'm all definitely saying that on purpose. In case yeah. anybody goes, her name is Cameron... Bure. Bure? I don't even know how you say her real name. Bure. Bure? Yeah. Well, I've called her Candace Grand Boulay for way too many years. I can't get out of it. She's married to Pavel Bure. She's married to who? He played for the Calgary Flames. Somebody played for the Calgary Flames, a hockey player? Yeah, she, married a hockey she married a hockey player? Yeah, from Russia. From Russia? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, he doesn't know. No. There we go. No, yeah, doesn't, okay. He doesn't have a Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he just knows she's cute. Yeah. You mean the, the woman in the kitchen? Uh, very nice. Uh, good cook. Uh, <laughs> this, oh, well, okay. Well, good for him. Yeah, you're welcome. That's your sports update. <laughs> That's my sports update? Oh, all I know is Carrie Underpants married a hockey player, Mike Fisher. And after one year of being off for the National Predators, Mike Fisher returned. And jokingly, I said, that's how much of a pain in the ass she is. He was like, I'd rather get my head bashed in. I don't know. Carrie could be a wonderful person. I'm just joking. It's weird to return to a sport. You retired from them. Just saying. Um, 
Okay, she may be considered the queen of Christmas movies, but Candy Creme Brulee is currently generating a perfect winter storm of controversy in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal. The actress and chief creative offer, uh, officer of the Great American Family Cable Network. You know what's weird? The Great American Family Cable Channel. The only reason I know that exists is because they, at some point when I was in L.A., said, do you want to come on the thing and do cooking stuff? And so I had to look it up. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this before I agree to it? And I watched it and went, no, I can't. No. I don't fit with these people. Um, that's fine for whatever it is, but and I don't cook. And it was just a no. But I'm just saying I'd never even heard of that channel until somebody said, do you want to be on it? Right. And then I was like, let me find no. it. And look at it. And I was like, no. Nope. Anyway. Um, she remarked that the channel's slate of Christmas movies would focus on traditional Mary as a p- marriage as opposed to the LGBT relationships that are increasingly being seen in holiday fair. Could I also see, say that maybe this means code word for white people? Right. Yeah. yeah. They're not saying that. Nope. And I'm not saying they're doing that. No. But I'm saying they might be. They might be. <laughs> If you go watch, I'm just saying. (laughs) Those comments have already drawn condemnation from celebrity raging from Hillary Burton to Jojo Suiya. She's one of those people in those movies. And now actor Neil Bledsoe, who has appeared in two GAF holiday movies, has made it clear he's not interested in returning to the network as long as it's a liberty seeks seeks to marginalize LGBT couples. He hopes they'll change their mind, but until every kind can be represented in their films with pride, my choice is clear. He told Variety, nice. I look forward to working with creators who put no limits on the stories we tell and follow through on their message of values with open arms. Or forget marriage and go for orphans. <laughs> How about that? Wow. I'm going to write a holiday movie That's about... Yeah. You a holiday movie. No, when I, I would love to write one. I don't even know how to write a movie, but I know you can go online and get this program where there's a movie already in there. And you just fill in your own shit. Yep. It's like a fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Um, but my movie's going to be a little more risque. I don't know who I would shop it to. Hulu. Hulu. Fine. <laughs> Somebody that'd be like, look, there's going to be some Drunky the Clowns representing <laughs> at this holiday festival. You're going to have to. <laughs> some gay farmers <laughs> in the art plan. Man. <laughs> um, so he's he's out. Okay. You know, good for him, I guess. Valid. It's just I just can't believe he looks exactly like Drew Bledsoe. But now there's all this fighting of which which channel is going to, who's going to be on what. And this is what, Just so. so you know, they lived who lived in St. Louis? Candace Creme Brulee. Candace lived in St. Louis? Yeah. <gasps> Why? Yeah. Did he play for the Blues? Yeah, for 10 minutes. Valerie Brulee. Yeah. Yeah. His name is Valerie? Yes. He's a Russian, so he's Val. Val. Why isn't he Vladimir? Because I don't know. Because you don't know. Yeah. You think you know. Uh-huh. You don't know. Here's what we're going to... This is what I love about the holiday movies. Now they have a vineyard. They have a vineyard? The Bure Family Wines in St. Helen, California. In St. Helen, California. She's Bure. a drinky. Oh, she's a drinky? Oh, she's got a vineyard. Oh. We got to get into that. Well, okay, here's, here's what I love about the holiday movies. They're so predictable. Here's the... This is what they consider good. Uh-huh. Small towns. Yeah. Big cities. Bad. Bad. Evil. Mm-hmm. Nothing good there. No, Nothing good nothing happens. Good. You know what's also super good? Old trucks that may not start. Right. Yeah, not new trucks. No. Not a Denali. No. Not some Yukon GMC beautiful thing or maybe a Dodge Ram with a giant head in the grill. Ford no. F-150? Bad. No. no. Oh, they're not going Ford F-150. No. no, that's way too modern. Yeah. These are all the Hallmark movies. Um, you know what else is bad? Um, corporations. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Evil assholes. The only thing is good. <laughs> only thing that's good. I love the, like the one they have the toy store. Yeah. Like those still really come on. Bob's toys. Yeah, and there's a tw- you know like a 35 year old hot guy working in there, and he's like, well, I'm gonna carry on the tradition. You know, um, what, how, what, how, how much you making? Right. You have to be on unemployment. You're you're, you're fixing a wooden Train. like a wooden snowman, and you're gonna search for hours online for the eyeball for the snowman because yeah. you know it it existed, and it's gonna get in the Lionel train where there's only two of those cars left. I mean, sometimes they kind of go over the, but I do like it. Here's what is my here's my other. It's not even a complaint anymore. Now I look forward to it. It used to be a complaint. So like some lady in these movies, she'll go. 
she'll get called from Chicago, big city, bad, evil. We know that. Or New York. They love to bash on New York or yeah. L.A. And she'll get called to her hometown in Whisper Lake Village or wherever. But they leave with a carry-on. That's all the luggage they have. And then when that lady appears in Christmas Town, <laughs> somehow she has eight coats. And they all are long coats. And they all are Christmas colors. Why, who wears a white coat traveling? Nobody, Nobody, unless you're rich and you're flying privately and then being carried around in a Fabergé egg. Nobody. You cannot wear a white coat. It's just going to get ruined. I just, it, next time you're watching, I'm fascinated with the fact that also they say all these people are so bundled up. Some of their scarves are the size of Afghans. And they claim it's that cold to be dressed like that, but you can't see the breath coming out of anybody's mouth. Right. Because it's not real. No. I wish somebody make an effort to be real. Could we? Anybody? Weather-wise? Yeah. And coffee-wise. Go to Vermont and shoot something. It's not New York people could go up. You get a crew from New York. You don't have to fly people from L.A. Canada, come on. Right. Canada. They'll come down. All right. That's my holiday bitching. That's that segment. Moving on. What's your favorite movie so far? My favorite movie so far? Well, there's none with royalty. That's my favorite. Um, Tanya's was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dolly's was fun for what it was. We'll make a list and we'll do a separate Yeah, I'll have a separate video of the ones that I thought were, but see, I don't think I deleted them. I deleted the ones where I don't like the premise. <laughs> as soon as I see the premise and they're like, Bebop reunites with Hoop Hop after we have a 10 year, no, 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 no. I won't do it. I will not do it. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, moving on, just one more, a little up, what, little kind of Tom Brady. Oh, no. Tom is falling apart at the seams. Tom is also being sued. So is Giselle um, for the FX, uh, FTX thing. I'll get to that. But this made me laugh so hard. This is when you know you've been into the you've been in the NFL too long. And I say that, and Tom was on my, but I've sat him. You benched him. I benched him oh. on my fantasy teams. I can't do it. You know, and he's, re- he's running around screaming fuck and this and screaming at people. But it's not no, it's not working. No. Hey, Grandpa. <laughs> no. I just want your autograph. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> it's a guy who intercepted the ball from him. Oh, no. Yeah, a guy on the 49ers <laughs> intercepted the ball oh, no. and then walked up and said, excuse me, sir. They have this on video. <laughs> excuse me, sir. Can you autograph my ball? I, I had a poster of you on my locker. He is now being called sir by his fellow players. You've stayed at the party too long, Tommy. I love you, but... Um, He'll come back. Um, not gonna this. Then the quarterback, the, the Purdy guy, the San Francisco guy, yep. he was too scared to ask Tom to do the jersey swap. swap. So he asked the coach, <laughs> will you ask him for me? Because I'm embarrassed. I wouldn't ask Stevie Nicks. I wouldn't ask her any for nothing. I wouldn't ask any of these women for anything. It's like... Yeah, you think Tom Brady wants your jersey? I don't think so. But you know what? He, Tom is a good guy, and he did do all that. So he signed the autograph. I watched him. He goes, I went, the, the, the kid who made him sign the ball, I went up like a little fan. I tried to soothe up to him, make him feel better. Man, you're the greatest ever, and all that stuff. But he is. He is. Thanks, it just made me laugh. He's, Excuse me, Sir. Sir. My fantasy team, In both it, well, I'm killing the children. It was a late pounce. I don't think they saw it coming. I think they thought they were safe. And guess what, little kittens? Mama cat's home. Whoa. Yeah, yep, yep. I beat an 11-year-old last week. I, I forced my way into the playoffs. In the big league, I don't even think I'll be in the playoffs. Lewis is in it for sure. My friend Dory, probably my friend Kathy, um, Drew. Ron didn't make it. No. Nope. But here's the thing, Ron. That's why he doesn't do it right in the pick and pull either. You can't just not do stuff for like two weeks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he gets busy. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, so, so as long as we're talking about this super, I don't usually do all this um, celebrity stuff, but I'm very sad Elton John has quit Twitter. I know. <sighs> it's probably for his mental health. 
well, I think it might be another thing. His husband was like, and that's another thing. Not only you're going to get off the road, God damn it. You're 75 years old. We have two kids here. They're like 10 and 11. You're, you're also going to stop the Tweety Tweet scene and you're going to get off the Tweet. No, he said, Elton doesn't like the way it's going. Now, here's the thing. Elon, I do see, I haven't seen hardly any changes till just recently. Like this morning, Ted Nugent is all over my um, Twitter feed. I don't follow Ted Nugent. Ever since Behind the Music when he admitted to having sex with underage girls and was kind of proud of it, I'm like, yeah, I'm okay on Ted. I don't need to hear more from Ted. Um, that's weird. That has been weird. And Elon has raised the character allotment from 280, that's what you're allowed, 280 characters, to 4,000. No! Yes, well, congratulations, oh! Elon. You just made Facebook. You just made it Facebook. God. Yeah, how is that? There's a lot... I don't know. I'm staying till the game is over. I'm not quitting. I'm not a quitter. I'm a leaver sometimes, but I'm not a quitter, and there's a difference. Yeah, Irish goodbye. Yeah, Irish goodbye is a purposeful choice. Elton John said, all my life I've tried to use music to bring people together, yet it saddens me how, mu how much misinformation is now used me to being, being used to divide our world. He had 1.1 million followers. I've decided to no longer use Twitter given their recent change in policy, which will allow misinformation to flourish unchecked. The 75-year-old singer, blah, 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 we know his thing. Um, yeah, he's mad. Since the Tesla uh, boss took over in a $44 billion deal, a series of changes. In, well, now they're back on the you can buy a blue check mark. I mean, well, what if I sold mine? Can I sell mine? <laughs> <laughs> I would pay for it. Right. What, if, what if I sold it? You could be Kathleen Madigan with a check mark, and I'll just go be... Elizabeth Madigan, right. my middle name, right. Liz. Yeah. Liz, Liz, if you will. Lizzie instead of Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that was kind of disappointing. I hate to see Elton go. I hope Cher doesn't quit. I don't know. Starting to get weird out there, though. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Elon, before I go any further here, I'm going to tell you this one. This is just, I don't even know... I don't know what's going on with Dave Chappelle. I don't know. I did a half hour special with Dave a long time ago. He was a lovely man. Um, but like this kind of stuff. Let me see. What did I do with it? Oh shit, I don't have it. He brought Elon out on stage in San Francisco at the Chase something somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. And like most of the crowd was booing him. And he said, welcome the richest man in the world. Now he had just fired Tons of people in Northern California. Elon did. Right, right. Yep. Why would you do that? Like, what's the bonus? He really, really upset a lot of people. And I'd be like, look, if I came to a comedy show, I don't want to think about just getting fired, and here's the goddamn person who did it. Right. I'm supposed to applaud, cheer for him? Right. And why do I necessarily have to applaud the richest person in the world? Maybe you did horrible things yeah. to become the richest person in the world. Right. I shouldn't applaud just that. I just thought that was very... Very strange, and I had the article about it, but I guess I I don't know. I'll find it again, but that's the the gist of it. Where I'm like, what is Dave doing? Like, what is? Oh, here it is. I don't think what? Even what is the point? Yeah. And you interrupted your own flow. Like, if you're doing a show, don't you want to? I don't. Keep going. I, I don't. I, I don't. Let's just say I don't think Elon uses his powers for good. Right. What if we gave Dolly Parton forty four billion dollars? What if we gave Mackenzie Scott for forty-four billion dollars? Right. Things, great things would happen. Yeah. He spent it on Twitter for what? Power? Yeah. I don't even know. Tech billionaire was met with a mixture of boos and cheers Sunday night. Well, I saw the clip, and then then everybody was like, "Oh, the clip's gone off Twitter." <laughs> I think he took it off for a while. Wow. Somehow it got back on because right. that's how I saw it. The comedian brought the Tesla CEO out on stage at a special punchline comedy club event at the Chase Center in San Francisco. The crowd can be heard jeering Musk, whose recent purchase of the social media platform has attracted criticism due to concerns about mass layoffs and looser content moderation. Chappelle said, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the richest man in the world. The number of audience cheered, but there was mostly a loud chorus of boos. You weren't expecting this, were you? Musk tells Chappelle following the boos. Chappelle, it sounds like some of the people you fired are in the audience. How awful. I know. Later in the video, Chappelle said, all these people are booing. I'm just pointing out the obvious. They have terrible seats in the stadium. 
What? Oh. Yeah. First of all, you should be glad somebody bought tickets. Right. And then you're going to make fun of them because they couldn't afford the rich people seats? Right. That's not nice. No. The owner of that video was po- the owner of the video that was posted on Twitter appears to have had their account suspended or has had it taken down with a message. This tweet is from an account that no longer exists. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm, the Pope in. Twitter user James Yu, who said he was at the Chappelle show, tweeted a good 80% of the stadium booed. Wow. 18,000 people were there and 80% of them booed. Dave gave him so many chances to speak, but he put his, he just put his hands in his pocket. I actually felt bad for him. I'm by no means an Eloy fanboy, more a centrist. I wanted to shake him for the love of God, man, say something and pretend it's a tweet. Musk responded to the booing in a tweet on Monday. Oh my God. The show was on the weekend, dude. You got to snap. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to think of something witty by Friday. I, I'm going to get on the facial book and respond to that shit a week from now. Um, totally. It was 90% cheers and 10% booze, except during quiet period. But still, that's a lot of booze, which is a first for me in real life. It's almost as if I've offended, this is what he's saying, San Francisco's unhinged leftists. But nah. What if those were the people you fired, dude? Right. Why do you assume that there's just... If you went to go see Dave Chappelle, mm-hmm. and I think he's out with somebody else. I forgot. Chris Rock? He and Rogan were out together. I think he's gone with Chris lately, though. Mm-hmm. You know, they're funny guys. Yeah. But it's not like the woke crowd, if you will. I don't even like that word. Yeah. If they're woke, I'm asleep, which is usually <laughs> true. I'm usually <laughs> napping. I'm the nap crowd. I'm, the nap I'm, not, crowd. I'm not woke, mm-hmm. but I'm not fully asleep. Right. I'm a napper. So the leftist, just these words, you know, the, the unhinged leftist, or I don't know what, maybe the people are just mad that he went up there and fired it and they're, they're cleaning out the Twitter offices. The whole game's over. Maybe right. they're just upset about it. Right. Um, anyway, that was very strange. I thought, I don't know why a comedian would do that. Unless that's your BFF and you got something kind of funny planned. Something, right. you know. Update! Boom! Iowa. Oh, no. The serial killer. Nope. It's a hard no. Really? Three-day exhaustive search. I told you I'd keep you guys updated because wouldn't that be something if there really was a guy in Iowa up in that part that had killed like 70 people? Authorities in Iowa called off the search for human remains after no evidence was found in a three-day evacuation of a property where a woman claimed her father dumped more than 70 women's bodies. Now, can I just say, most people don't accuse their dad of that. I've never heard of that. And if it's 70 bodies, if she's right, how come? I Do I fully trust the Iowa people doing this? No. no. Not 100%. And I'll just say it's not because they're not smart. Just a resource thing, right? Exactly. Like the Idaho thing. Right. Holy shit. By the way, the children of TikTok. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had to eat a piece of that crack. <laughs> right. Regarding the Idaho murders mm-hmm. of the children, yep. the TikTok kids mm-hmm. are on it. Really? I have seen so much crazy shit on TikTok regarding this situation. Uh-huh. Or I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Look what that kid found. They are, they, and I love it because it's on a college campus and it's like their, you know, it's their area. So they're like, okay, like there's somebody coming around here murdering people. Then we'll figure it out. Right. If you won't, if you're too dumb, we yeah. will do it. Yeah. But the videos, they've caught all kinds of stuff. And, and they all start off with, let me say, I'm not a cop. I'm not a detective. But then they point out some glaring thing. Some guy posted a video on TikTok. I mean, maybe I'm my mom at this point and I'm being tricked by bullshit, but I don't think so because I don't think in a case of this high magnitude and this visibility, he posted a video. He got up in the middle of the night. He's a neighbor, heard people screaming, had enough wherewithal, if you believe the video, to turn on his phone and record it. And you can hear a girl screaming and you can hear, leave me alone. And she's screaming some more and screaming, stop it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of people could say, oh, well, he could have just, yes, of course, he could have made the whole thing up. 
But if you're going to start doing that in a major major murder investigation, this isn't something that happened 20 years ago where you could post a weird video. Like, I don't think a lot of people would have the balls to insert themselves into an ongoing with that kind of stuff. So I believe them. Yeah, I agree. I believe the video. Um, But anyway, back to Iowa for a second. The Iowa... They've called it off. Uh, Lucy Studi McKitty, 53, said that her dad, Donald Dean Studi, was a serial killer and forced her and her siblings into dispose, disposing of the corpses of the women he killed. A recent tip, uh, tip prompted local state feds, federal officials to conduct a search of the rural property in which cadaver dogs alerted at multiple locations of possible human remains back in October. That's why I don't understand... Are your cadaver dogs not trained right? right. Are they loser dogs? <laughs> loser <laughs> dogs. <laughs> no. Um, they said they went through exhaustive efforts to collect and examine soil sp- samples. No evidence or other items have, were found of any concern. Mm-hmm. I don't know the picture of the guy. <laughs> um, wow. I don't know. They, they spent three days. State, local, and fed and federal law enforcement assisted. Okay, well, then they brought everybody in. Authorities brought in an array of experts representing several disciplines and significant assets to excavate, collect, and examine soil samples from a site identified by a reporting party. After exhaustive evidence, no evidence or other items of concern were recovered. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. The daughter said that he was routinely drunk and he liked to kill women by smashing or kicking their heads inside a trailer. Well, she has three other siblings. One said definitely their dad didn't do this. Right. I haven't heard from the other two. What say you other two siblings? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. She's saying they're digging in the wrong spots. She lives in Florida. Lucy does. Well, why don't you go up there? Get up there and help. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's an update. That's a case closed. There will be no more updates on that unless no. something crazy happens because I think everybody's given up on Lucy's crazy claims right i didn't think they were crazy up date oh. now for you guys who have been listening to this podcast for a long time you know i'm obsessed with barry and honey sherman yes and i'd like to thank a canadian termite who sent me this on twitter because i probably wouldn't have seen it because uh well it, yeah it came from cbc um uh news okay. so i try to check in on that stuff but sometimes i forget um CBC, the leading news source of Canada. Yep. The Sun. Now, if you don't even know anything about this case, what was that show that I made you tell me about, the Canadian one? I watched it. It's like... Okay, The Fifth Estate. Go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes. Fifth Estate, episode Barry and Honey Sherman. Yep. Um, It's the craziest thing ever. If you're into true crime, I'm going to go see if there's a podcast because I got to drive. To Gatlinburg. I'll have three hours. I won't see Dolly. I'm going. I have an $89 ticket to go on the train through Dollywood to see the Christmas lights. No. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. That's where me and then you go up the road to the um, moonshine, old smoky moonshine distillery where me and my friend Vic, he was like, I can't believe you can get a flat of moonshine for $7. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I can't believe it either, Victor. Um, but they let you taste everything in there. And then it's smart because you buy the little flight for seven bucks. And then you end up leaving with gallons of moonshine. Oh, I have margarita flavor. I have honeysuckle red. I have <laughs> vanilla. Oh, my God. If you had the espresso. I mean, it's so good. They don't tell you. It just erases your brain. But the, I, it's a for sipping, not shooting. That's no. what I kept telling Vic. I'm like, Vic. Anyway. I talked about this a long time ago. Uh, Barry and Honey, Sh- the son of Barry and Honey Sherman, murder victims, mm-hmm. adds $25 million to help, to the reward to help solve his parents' murders. Now, we're just going to do a little background on this in case people haven't kept up, understandably, because it kind of got quiet. Okay. And you know what? I'm not sure we're going to solve our Idaho thing, but yeah. I think we will. But... Idaho, the Idaho murder is in Moscow, Idaho, small college town. This happened in Toronto. Right. Barry and Honey Sherman murder. 
it not it's not excusable. Toronto PD, Toronto PD RCMP. RCMP. Yeah. This week marks five years since Toronto billionaires Harry and, Barry and Honey Sherman were killed in their home, and their son Jonathan Sherman has announced he's adding twenty five million to the reward set up to help solve the case. The Shermans were found slain in their North York mansion. North York, I did not pronounce mispronounce that. It's North York mansion on December 15, 2017. Autopsy reports show the couple died by strangulation, and the police have said there were no signs of forced entry into their home. Closure will not be possible until those are responsible for this evil act are brought to justice, Jonathan said, blah, blah. To that end, he's contributing $25 million. That brings the total reward to $35 million. They had previously offered ten million for information leading to a conviction. Mm-hmm. If you want to know more about, it, they were philanthropists. They were bazillionaires. They were um, everything and everything in Canada. Um, huge pillars of the Jewish community. Yeah. None of this makes sense. Why they were murdered? Barry had a lot of enemies, though, and he was in a lot of lawsuits. And a lot of people thought he had fucked them over. She's running around on the charity circuit and driving to Kiowa like a proper Canadian in a car. She, you're a billionaire. You can fly from Toronto to Charleston and lickety split, yeah. hour 40. You could get off the plane in Charleston. There could be a car that would drive you straight out to Kiowa Island. It made me laugh that, like, I don't care how rich they were, still the Canadian side of her was like, oh, hey, you want to drive down to Charleston? <laughs> They stopped and got chips, and they're, it's like the Canadians she that live by my parents in Florida. They'll be like, oh, hey, Kathleen, nice to see you. We're going to run back up to Calgary. We forgot our sunglasses. <laughs> what? What are you doing? They drive back at the drop of a hat. If they, I am exaggerating. Not, it's usually not the Western Canadians. It's usually like the Toronto people that come down to the Gulf side of Florida. But they'll be like, oh, yeah, my daughter had a baby. We're going to go see it. We'll be back tomorrow. What? Um, anyway, I, I don't know. You guys should go watch the fifth estate if you don't really. Um, oh, let's see. I have the latest. In, they have no updates, the latest updates in the investigation. They don't have any. They know there's a guy in a video that's outside the house, and this is what they got. They said the person is between five feet, five foot six and five foot nine. So that's short for a guy, yep. right? Yep. Five, six is short yep. for a guy. But their race, sex, and other identifiers cannot be determined. The video shows the person walking with an unusual gait where they kick up their right foot with every step. Well, that guy shouldn't be so hard to find. No. This is just some guy walking around the outside of the property, though. You don't even know he did it. Exactly. Exactly. Toronto police say the investigation is still active and ongoing. They won't confirm whether or not a suspect has been identified. Well, well, how, how about chop, chop, bang, bang? Just say you got nothing or say you have a suspect. Right. At this point, I mean, it's been, I understand secrecy in the beginning. And believe me, I don't think those Moscow, Idaho cops are doing a secrecy thing. Mm-mm. I think, I mean, I've lived in small towns. You're just not used to all that shit. No. Yeah. I don't blame them, and I'm not even saying they're stupid. I'm just saying they're not experienced with this kind of stuff. And I, I think we need the feds feds to come in, the real FBI. Not the Idaho FBI. Sorry. No insult. No insult. Meant, it, meant but I mean, whatever. Update! <laughs> if it was my kid, I'd want the real FBI. Yeah. And maybe they're there now. I yeah. really haven't checked. No. But there doesn't seem to be any progress. Right. We're looking for a, a white Hyundai elect, Electra. Right. Is that a car? Yeah. Hyundai Electra? Yeah. I saw a picture of it. Popular on college campuses, really? Yeah. Is is it electric? It's affordable. No. Mm. It's not electric. South Carolina. Now, remember, this is another throwback update. <laughs> the Murdaugh murders. Uh-huh. Mandy, um, my friend, Mandy Matney, who I met at my show, is a wonderful youngster, and she has the podcast. It is just insanely great, mm-hmm. and it just keeps going because this keeps going. Right. So if you haven't kept up on the Murdaugh murders, that's the South Carolina where the guy shot pretty much for sure pretty much i have thought and agreed it's starting to come out he killed his wife and his son he's a pill head 
but he's a rich pill head to avoid people um, checking out his finances. But he wanted the sympathy. How do you shoot your own kid? I mean, a lot of people shoot their spouses. I get it. You just cross the line. And South Carolina prosecutors put forth what they believe was the Alex, Alex Murdoch's motive for killing his wife and his son. By the way, um, Mandy got a deal for her. This is all going to be made into a movie. Or docu series, awesome. or well, yeah, 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 very, very. Great. I'm so proud of the young people. Yep. Well done, because this amount of bullshit. It's like I said in the beginning. You don't really find real reporters anymore because people just report what's already been reported, and they yep. call themselves a reporter. She went and did all this, and I'd be terrified of some of these old Southern white guys. Yep. You starting to fuck with their money, and you're fucking with their everything. Yep. Oh, yep. No, thank you. No, no, no. no. I'll just be at the bar ignoring it. Thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> He wanted to dra- distract attention from the illicit schemes he was running to avoid financial ruin, they alleged in a motion filed on Thursday. The evidence will show that he accrued substantial debts over a period of years and was and to uncover those debts began engaging in illicit financial crime. The evidence will further show these financial crimes are about to come to light at the time of the killings, more specifically on the date of the killings. Whoa. So he went and murdered his wife and kid on the date that all this shit was going to come out so that would serve as a distraction. That's what the prosecutors are putting forth as the reason. Ultimately, the murder served as Murdoch's means to shift the focus away from himself and buy himself additional time and try to prevent his financial crime from being uncovered, which, if revealed, would have resulted in personal and legal financial ruin for Murdoch. The bodies of Maggie Murdoch, 52, and their 22-year-old son, Paul, were found on the property Family property in Ruleton, Colleton County on June 7th, 2021. He's been charged with murdering both. He's pleaded not guilty. He also, he also faces dozens of charges related to theft and misappropriation of money from his clients in his own law firm. You got to go listen to the podcast to get if you really want to go deep, uh, way deep on that. Mm-hmm. It's a great podcast. But I didn't know that was the same day. I mean, Dude, it doesn't matter. Well, how do you shoot? <laughs> kid, I don't know. I don't know. Update! <laughs> Update of one of my favorites. This is such a throwback week. Mm-hmm. Flight 370. Ah! Ah! Malaysia Flight 370. If you'd like to know my true feelings on that, please go watch my special Bothering Jesus <laughs> on Netflix. Um, they found another piece of the plane. What? And a guy no. at Madagascar's had it for five years, and he was using it as a washing board. And this piece of, <laughs> I know, this guy has found shit tons. Um, yeah, he just, it's just it's all the shit that floats up by his house, and then he takes it home and thinks, can I use it? They say that this piece of um, equipment that the, he found, that you just watch up, proves that the landing gear was down when the plane hit the water, okay. which proves that... The pilot did it on purpose because putting the landing gear down will guarantee that the plane will sink quickly and it has no chance. Okay. Yeah. So wow. the landing gear on missing flight 370 was down, suggesting the pilot may have deliberately crashed into the sea to let the jet sink quickly. Um, the door has been identified as a component of a Boeing 777 known as a Trinian door. It likely penetrated the inside of the aircraft's dis- disintegrating engines. The experts said and uh, said it makes it highly probable the landing gear was down when the aircraft crashed into the ocean. They did not announce the finding of the crucial piece of evidence until Monday, but it has already prompted calls for further in- investigation into the March H 2014 disappearance of the aircraft and its 12 Malaysian crew members and the 200 vessels. Blah, 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 blah. Um... After years of questions and analysis, uh, and analysis, a British engineer and an American who searches for the wreckage has suggested the plane was crashed quickly and with deliberate and intention. I've thought this guy did it the whole time. I did too. Because he had the simulator in his house and did that route. Right. They went back and found it. And he was, apparently his friend said he was depressed. Planes don't fall out of the sky. No. How do we know that? Because we learned that. We know. In um, the video Soar. You can buy those videos for people that have a fear oh, yeah. of flying. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have it had a fear of flying, but I know <laughs> people. Like 
Right. Uh, um, based on the new evidence, the flaps are not to believe it retracted when it landed in the Indian Ocean. Combination of high-speed impact designed to break up the aircraft and the ex- extended landing gear designed to sink the af- aircraft as quickly as possible. Both show a clear intent to hide the evidence of the crash. Yep. I just wanted to find this thing about, um, then it just goes into him being a fisherman named Tate Tate Alley, Tate Alley, Tate Alley, Tate Alley, who found it. This is the last piece. A 32 inch by 28 inch landing gear door appears to have matched the seven, the one plane we're missing. He found it in 2017 on the peninsula, some peninsula in Madagascar. He was aware of its significance and has been using it as a washing board by his washing board by his wife since its discovery. Wow. <laughs> the world is crazy. This guy, <laughs> I think the more that's why I also I know it was hard, but if you're one of the family members, don't sign off on a payoff. <sighs> I mean, I understand why they do it, but if they can prove that he did it, he's your employee then you're responsible and I sue you. If you just say, I don't know, yeah. here's 10,000 bucks. Will you sign off on this paper that says you won't sue me if we ever do find out? Right. And I'm sure a shit ton of them did it. Sure. And as most people aren't lucky enough to just have a lawyer for free in your house on the couch like I do. <laughs> hey, Jackalope. Hey, Jackalope. What you say? How you do? All right, a little lighter news. Oh, my God. Lighter. We're on to news. Remember the Fleetwood Mac Rumors album cover? And for whatever reason, Mick Fleetwood decided to have wooden balls hanging down. Well, they auctioned them off. 128,000 bucks. Somebody paid. Yep. Yeah. Are you kidding? Uh, (sighs) No. It wasn't the only items to be sold at the auction. A crop top hat made by Nick's for him, along with his Rock and Roll Hall of Fame trophy, Sold for 16000 each. A few of Christine McVie's keyboards and touring organs were also sold along with the dress, Thea Porter dress she wore to events in 1971, which went to 31000 Another rumors prop, the dress she wore on the back of the album cover sold for $56,000. They sold off all kinds of Fleetwood Mac stuff. Instruments, gear, personal items owned by Fleetwood, Christine McVie, and John McVie. A portion of the proceeds was donated to Music Cares. Where'd the other portion go? Yeah. Yeah, where's the rest of it? I don't know. Weird. Yep. Weird. $128,000. Somebody bought those wooden balls and are going to put them in a little case in their house. Right. And then what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look what I got. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Hey, Kathleen, um, I just went and used your guest bathroom. Are those wooden balls in there? Yeah. <laughs> Those are Mick Fleetwoods. Remember that? How about that? How about that? I for, okay, I got to go to, um, I forgot the holy shit they found it. Holy shit! They found it. I skipped over that. I was too excited. About wooden balls? No, I was too excited to get to the uh, Barry Sherman thing and that. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I'm kind of sidetracked by the Idaho murders. The termites are forgiving. A 1,300-year-old necklace was found in England's ex- experts calling it a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. You should see how in perfect shape this is. This is amazing. The museum further states, whoa, sorry. Whoa, who's that? California? That's a San Francisco number. What? I don't know anybody there. A 1,300-year-old <laughs> necklace made of gold and semi-precious stones. Um was found in central England in an early Anglo-Saxon burial site under a construction project. These construction people in England should keep their eyes wide open because there's more stuff being uncovered. This thing, wait till you see the picture of it. <sighs> Archaeologists, the, the find is being heralded as Britain's most significant pre female pre-Christian burial place. Whoa. So once-in-a-lifetime gold necklace dating back to 630 or 600. To, God damn it. Sorry, it's the government. I swear to God. It's, it's the it is. It's healthcare. It's healthcare.org. I will. I thought my phone was off. It's healthcare.org, and they won't stop. And I know. <laughs> this is where it kills me. I know that the deadline is the 15th. Right. 
I am a procrastinator. Every day I see it. I don't need to be keep calling. They call you anyway, though. God. Right. They don't ever consider I might just be ignoring you. Hello. This is the United States government health care. They are not aliens. We have noticed that you have not completed and replied. Hey, this is IAN healthcare.com. No, they don't go, hey, this is IAN healthcare.com. They go, this is. First of all, there's a delay when I go, hello? 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 And then they go, hello. Like, you're all calm and I'm the crazy person. Mm-hmm. Well, you called me and you're not saying hello. So who's the crazy person? That's true. <sighs> I turned the phone off. I know when the deadline is. Why can't you just understand that if somebody ignores you this much, they're probably a procrastinator? Well, I'll do it when I need to. They want to know they call you 44. Christ. Anyway, this necklace is from... The year 630 or through 670, they're not sure. Mm-hmm. It's described as the richest of its type ever uncovered in Britain. At least 30 pendant and beads made of Roman coins, gold, garnets, glass, and semi-precious stones are part of the jewelry that is discovered close to Northampton. The centerpiece of the necklace is a large rectangular pendant made of red garnets with a gold cross motif. Experts think this piece, which is made of red garnets set in gold, was only... Half of a hinge clasp before it was reused. Oh, it was discovered in a cemetery that was considered to be belong to high status women, possibly royalty. Cool. Two decorated pots and a shallow copper dish were also found in the burial. You got to just go see the picture of it. I mean, to find this, you'd be like, what? Yeah, what the hell? And then we have another. Holy shit. Prehistoric 50-foot whale discovered deep in Jungle Valley by accident. No! It's the children. A nearly complete ancient whale skeleton measuring 50 feet long has been discovered in Taiwan, the most complete whale specimen ever found on the island. That's awesome! In May, Zhu Wenbo, one of the members of the whale fossil evacuation team from the National Cheng Kong University's Archaeological Institute, was found was searching for fossils with local fossil collector Zhang Yuma, when they found four of the whale's ribs sticking out of the gr- ground deep in the jungle valley. After some initial evacuation, they contacted Yang Ziri at the university. Cool. I'd just like to say I'm blowing through this article, reading all these names pretty good. <laughs> Very impressive. For me, yeah. The fossil, which turned out to be nearly 70% complete, is estimated that to be of a blue whale or a big fin whale that lived around 85,000 years ago. Wow, 70% complete. That's amazing. It's just been sitting on... It, it, yeah. Come on. Wait. How big is the jungle in Taiwan? The whale's shoulder blades, jawbone, and back of the skull and tail vertebrae are also well preserved. Preserved. A national Cheng Kong University release said, uh, we don't need to know about the history of whales, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, that's how cool is that for the youngsters? Very they go cool. out there fossil hunting and they found a 50-foot long... Come on, I'm only five feet tall. That's 50 of me. No, that's 10 of me. That's a lot of you. 10 of me laying foot to foot. Um, it was evacuated. It took them 90 days and carried on foot back to the university. They had to take it through the jungle. Oh, God. According to the release, the heaviest whale jawbone weighed 334 kilograms. They said in the release, we've never seen jawbones longer than 3.2 feet. Eight people carried the bones on wooden stretchers over rugged terrain through dense vege- vegetation. Then all I think is, shit, I forgot bug spray. <laughs> and now I'm in a Taiwanese jungle. Yeah. And you know what else is out there? Bad snakes. Bad snakes. Bad snakes. Big snakes. Very bad, bad, big, bad. Big, big snakes. Oh. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's the second largest mammal fossil found in Taiwan after some rhino fossils were discovered in 1971. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Good for the children. And good for them for walking it out on foot through a jungle. That's where I quit being an archaeologist and go, you know what, this is super fun to find. I'm just going to leave it here. Fine. How about that? Fine. I'm going to leave it right here. Um, I'm going to save this one. Okay. That's another holy shit they found it, but I'm going to save it for next week. Now, here's some great news. Animal related. The largest of the deer family, moose. So a moose is very, very large deer, in case you didn't know. Well, right, but he's in the deer family. No. Well, that's what it says. Where? Outsider.com, and I think they know. Okay. The largest of the deer family, moose, mm-hmm. 
can be found all across the northern forest of North America. It's funny, too, because a guy that was helping me do some stuff on the house, there were two giant, like, Hartford deer. Well, I don't know that. The, the, out yeah. They know that. Yeah. But there were two giant bucks standing on the side of the house, and he came around back. And I go, oh, did you see those uh, those giant bucks? And he goes, yeah, um, just so I'm good on that. They don't, like, maul you or nothing. <laughs> right? <laughs> I go, I, go, uh, I no. don't think they would. Um, they Usually deer are pretty uh, freakish and just run skittish, but... I don't know. If one gets rabies, it might get hungry. I don't know. Maybe it all of a sudden become a carnivore. Maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, it made me laugh. They don't like maul you and shit, right? Mm. Their habitat, moose, usually doesn't include the state of Washington. They roam northern states like Idaho, Montana, and Maine, and their numbers are far larger in the colder environments of Canada and Alaska. I have seen a moose in Canada. I've, I've seen moose in Alaska. I've never seen one in Maine. I have not spent enough time. Well, I've been to Idaho, Montana, but I haven't spent enough time. But anyway, visitors and workers at Mount Rainier National Park see countless deer and elk wandering the mountainous terrain, but never any moose. Until now! First one ever! Recently, a female moose was spotted in Mount Rainier for the very first time, and it's safe to say wildlife officials were just a little excited about it. That's a nerd (laughs) trying to be funny. Posting the unbelievable sight to Facebook, park, park officials could hardly contain their joy. Wait, is this a moose? Yes, that is a moose spotted on Sunrise Rose. This is the first recorded moose sighting from within Mount Rainier National Park in southwest Washington. Yes, I know that's a lot of exclamation points, but we are really, really, really excited about this sighting. Good for them. Good for the. Yeah, this is where I could be, I could be an animal nerd. I can't be a science nerd. I'm not smart enough, but, or a math nerd. No, 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 but I could be... I would be this excited over this. I'm yeah. with the animal people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. What a beautiful creature. Blah blah blah. And then they tell you, don't go up to one. Don't be. Don't be messing with them. Don't do it. No. That's like elk. Don't do it. One was laying on my ball in Canada. It was the biggest. Well, it was right next to my ball at the 150 yard marker. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He just gets to keep a ball. That's how that works. He was, huge. He was humongous. Yeah. I would say 2,000 pounds, and I'm not even kidding. Um, okay, so these volcanoes are going off in Hawaii. I've been at the Big Island, and I did the touristy thing. Well, I drove all the way around the Big Island. You can do it. There's one road, and the problem is if the lava goes down to that road and cuts off access, the people in Hilo, the town, are going to have to drive all the way around the other way, creating an enormous pain in their ass and adding, like, two hours to commute. It's just a mess. So we don't want the lava to go down and cut off their route. And I've seen the lava fields. It's just amazing. If you ever can go to the Big Island, it's not like, you know, traditional Hawaii. It's not like Maui or Oahu, but it's super interesting. Uh, It's definitely not like, no. I mean, parts of it are, but whatever. Right now, two volcanoes are going off. Yep. Eruptions at Mauna Loa and Kilauea. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Kilauea. Kilauea. Um... They're considered to be a blessing from the Polynesian god of fire. Until that lady, the Polynesian goddess, fucks up your road to work. (laughs) Then, I don't think she's so... There, the locals are very excited about it. I don't know that I... That's where I'd be a little too not islandy. And go, "Mm, I don't know if I'm quite as excited. The auspicious and spiritual tone has struck the island as the glow of lava oozing from Mauna Loa, the largest volcano in the world, and Kilauea, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, ignites the landscape of Hawaii's big island, a sign that Pele, the Polynesian god of Sapphira, is blessing the land. Now you can have cocktails. There's a bar on the rim rim of of Mauna Loa. Was that Mauna Loa? I never know. I don't know which one. Mauna Kea. What? The volcano. Mauna Loa. Loa. You, and you can see it bubbling. It looks it, cool. It's very, it's an awesome experience. And and people go, oh, well, you know, having a drink at the thing, isn't that touristy? Yeah. But that's what they built. That's what they got. That's why, that's why it's crowded. Why that's why you, you have to call and get a reservation for a table by the window. Right. Mm. She's quite an elemental force. 
Jessica so-and-so. Locals and tourists alike have been flocking to the best spots on the island to take in views of the red-hot lava slowly bubbling from the crater of volcanoes. Yeah, I don't... I guess, but what if it goes crazy crazy? Some people come to the park not knowing they're coming through eruptions happening, and when they discover it, it's a pretty special experience. The excitement on the island is palpable, and it's bringing people together, especially since Mauna Loa has not erupted since 1984. Ah! Elizabeth Fien, president and CEO of Friends of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, told ABC News, this is a time of year when Kilauea is the most active, so the tourists who had planned around that regular event receive an unexpected treat of the Mauna Loa eruption as well. Nice. Yeah. I don't know about this. This is fun till it ain't. This is one of these situations where you're like, no, it was so awesome. And then, yeah, then, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it's fun till it ain't. Um, okay. This, we're going to talk in depth next week about the little FTX Sam Bankman Freed, who's been arrested. And he was a crypto guy. And just in anybody case anybody's wondering, the other crypto exchanges are fine. Yep. My crypto is still making money. Yep. Not like you, whatever I put in, it's like, um, I don't know, it's a couple thousand bucks ahead. Now it has been way more than that, and I didn't cash out because I'm just letting it ride. Right. But the, the, the downfall of a, a, that, that one crypto exchange, so if you don't know what crypto, say there's a New York Stock Exchange where you can buy stock, crypto, right. You can buy it from lots of exchanges. Uh-huh. Well, this guy, this little, this is going to, God, I would want to murder this kid. <laughs> um, Sam Bankman Freed, he's been arrested as of today. I'm going to do a deep dive into oh, it. Wow. They got him in the Bahamas, and the Bahama people. Now, do I, is he still in jail? I don't know. Did they get him out? Mm-hmm. With what money? I'd go, you literally do not have any money, and your parents don't have any goddamn money either because you're the one buying them shit. And putting it in their name, and they're going to sell it. And the girlfriend, she had a... I'm going to go a deep dive next week. Okay. So if you guys care, it's just really a crime thing. It's not really about crypto. You don't really even have to understand crypto to understand what this man has done. Giant Ponzi scheme was bullshitting and moving money where he shouldn't have been moving. Mm-hmm. And I'm tired of the hoodied children that are destroying people's lives, and then they Take walk away. No, 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 nay, nay, you're not walking away. Right. But guess who's getting sued? Kevin Hart, Gwyneth Paltrow. Madonna, Jimmy Fallon, and others, um, they're getting sued for the NFT endorsements. Now, there's a difference. There's crypto. Uh-huh. That's FXT. FTX. NFTs are the digital artwork, the things that I've said I don't understand from the beginning, and I want no part of it. Right. Um, but they're saying that because it's all lost so much value. Looks like a good old-fashioned cash grab celebrity endorsement has become a bit more fraught when it comes to the digital marketplace. Nobody's buying this shit anymore. No. At least from what I can see. Nobody cares. Less than a month after Tom Tom Brady and G- Giselle and Stephen Curry were sued for pitching th- for the FTX thing, the crypto, yep. as if Tom had, isn't having enough problems. <laughs> You've got a hot supermodel that's leaving you. You've got people... On the team you were playing against, going, excuse me, sir, can I have your autograph? <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. I'm super old. Sorry about that. And you're sure. being sued with Giselle. The two of you are being sued for representing the FTX thing. Now, I don't know. I got to figure that out. Like, if somebody said to me, do you want to do a commercial? And you told me, hey, this is this, and I believed you. Right. I, I guess it depends on what they said in the ad. Did you say I bought a bunch? If you did do that and you're lying, then yes, you're in trouble. But, like, I have a bunch of Ethereum. If somebody wants me to do an ad, I'll totally tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, I'm up yeah, $18. <laughs> I'm up $27.50 exactly. on Coinbase. <laughs> um, Super excited. But the NFT thing, I mean, I don't know. I don't really care about Gwyneth Paldrow no. or Madonna. But either which way, I don't care. But... Should you be sued if you did an ad? If you didn't, it depends. <laughs> um, along with Universal TV also being named a defendant, high-profile musician manager Guy Osiris is specific as the brains behind the whole alleged big bucks, big bucks scam. Defendant's promotional campaign was wildly successful, generating billions of dollars in sales and resales. The manufactured celebrity endorsements and misleading promotions regarding the launch 
were able to artificially increase the interest rate and the price of NFTs during relevant period, the relevant period, causing investors to purchase these losing investments at drastically inflated prices. I don't know about all this. I mean, I don't give a shit about Madonna, really. Um, But I'm going to do a follow-up on that one. So we got people being sued for endorsing crypto, and we have people being sued for endorsing NFTs. This is what I would also blame on my agent. Did you not read the contract properly? My lawyer. Did you not read it? I'm just the circus clown who screams, tickets, tickets, tickets. (laughs) (laughs) I can't be responsible for what's inside tent one, tent two, tent three. Right. Right. Um, This is weird. Moving on. (laughs) This is, we're going to need a lot of updates on this. Okay. So Tiffany, the jeweler, you know, Tiffany Jewelry. Okay. Well, Tiffany, Turkish Tiffany's. Tycoon, dead after mysterious plunge from cruise ship. What? I understand drunkies falling off carnival. Right. <laughs> Why is she on carnival? She wasn't on carnival. Oh, so on. No, she's on a, you know, bigger a, a bigger ship, yep. shall okay. we say? No problem. But here's the thing. I understand the children. They get drunk on, because carnival is one of the more, um, uh, lower priced fares, so you get younger people that don't have tons of money. Mm-hmm. Well, I really don't understand falling off because I remember being on those cruise ships with Lewis and I thought the railing was pretty high, but I'm only five foot nothing. Sure. So if you're tall, if you're six foot, that railing probably ain't that high. Right. And then kerplunk, you're drunk, and you hope you get found. <laughs> this one doesn't make any sense. The wealthy owner of Tiffany's Jewelry Empire in Turkey is believed to have plunged to her death from a cruise ship during a dream vacation with her Swiss lover, who has been questioned and released in the mysterious case. Her name is D-I-L-E-K. Dilek. Dilek. Dilek Ertek. She's 71 years old. Mm -hmm. Fell off the Norwegian spirit into the South Pacific off the coast of Tahiti on October 26th, and her body has not been recovered. Well, yeah, it's been... We're going over them yeah, six weeks. Yeah. Listen to this, though. Oh, boy. The tycoon's son, Goki Atuk, said the, jewel- <laughs> said the jewelry had disappeared from the safe Goki. in her cabin. Oh. oh. Closed circuit camera footage so- shows that. I don't know. Huh. Well, she's t- why is she taking Tiffany jewelry? It's probably just her jewelry every day. You're thinking, oh, I have one Tiffany something. Yeah, well, this lady, everything she owns is Tiffany because she's Tiffany. Thank you. I understand. Right. I'm just saying. <laughs> don't leave it there. <laughs> well, to her, it's probably like me leaving my silver earrings that cost $15 in Mexico. At, in Mexico. <laughs> I mean, I'd be sad if they were gone, oh, but, you know, right. it's not like I can't replace them somehow. Closed cur- circuit camera footage shows that she went overboard at 3 a.m. What are you doing up at 3 a.m.? Right. Yet her unnamed 74-year-old boyfriend only reported her missing about 20 hours later. Oh. 20 hours? Oh. 20? Yeah. <gasps> Expert wondered how the five foot one woman, see, I said for the shorties. That is a very high railing right. for us. Yes. They wondered how she ended up going up the three-foot railing in her cabin. Oh, she went off in her cabin. That'd be like me going on the deck and Lou just throwing me over. Yeah. If he picked up my feet and I didn't know he was going to do it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just flip right over. Wow. I can't hang on. I'm not, I'm not, you know, a gymnast. No. No, I'm not Simone Boy, where I can go, oh, I'll just hang on and flip right back up here. I'm good. It is difficult to fall from this type of passenger and cruise ship, Mustafa Khan, the ship captain, told Turkish media. At the family's urging, police questioned Ertek's lover after the crew kept him under under observation until the ship docked three days later in Tahiti. The man reportedly returned to Switzerland after being released due to a lack of evidence. Ertek boarded the ship in Papati, (laughs) French Polynesia, and he planned to celebrate her birthday on Bora Bora on November 5th en route to Honolulu. Well, aren't they fabulous? Whoa. 
I find it very suspicious that the missing situation is not reported, meaning her. Because on cruise ships, daily activities and entertainment are organized frequently, and everyone is in contact with each other. People who cannot hear from each other inform the front desk, and an announcement is made. So it is confusing that the news of the disappearance is given 20 hours later. Right. 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 <laughs> Even if I'm not, sh- say, Lou's in the cabin next to me. Uh-huh. If I don't see Lou for, like, the morning. You're going to go. I'm going to go, well, where was he? Yeah, he didn't get up. Like, right. what the hell? Um, Eric, who opened the first Tiffany's shop in Istanbul in 1995, was a graduate of Miramar S- something University. She went on to study at the Gemological Institute of America in the Big Apple. Mm hmm. She went overboard while the ship was sailing on a sp- That's it. That's weird. And you know what? This will never be finished. No. He just. Nobody. Who else would have done it? Who else can get in your cabin? You could have people jump over the railing, but you'd have to open your little door, at least on the one cruise ship I was on. But I've only well. been on one kind, so I don't know how they all work. But uh, 20 hours? Could be the same thing. What if it's security and they know you have jewelry? What if it's security and they want to kill her and take the jewelry? Yeah, you never know. Oh, paddles, that doesn't make any sense. Yes. You know it. Yeah, you're you're, rich, you're no. Yeah, you're reaching. You're no. reaching. I'm offering solutions. Here's my feel good story before we go. <laughs> Come on. No, it's a feel good story. Uh, all right. <laughs> and this makes me very happy. <laughs> I don't usually ever talk about people I know in work, mm-hmm. comedians or whatever. Keep that all under my own hat. Mm-hmm. But Jay Leno reflects on being burned in his car fire. Eight mm-hmm. days later, I had a brand new face. This is what I love about Jay. He's so strange in the strangest good way. Mm-hmm. One time I was driving through um, the fancy part of Beverly Hills mm-hmm. in my car, a normal car, mm-hmm. and I hear <laughs> And I thought, holy shit, like the gangs have made it to the fancy part of Beverly Hills. They're like shooting people. Right. And around the corner comes Leno on top of a steam engine thing. Like it looked like something from Six Flags when I was a child. Drive the <laughs> antique car. And I rolled down my window. Yeah. He's on top of it. There's no ceiling. There's no, he's just, he's got that giant wheel and he's yeah. holding it. And I go, <laughs> I rolled down my window and I go, you're a freak. <laughs> and he goes, hey, Dollface, what are you doing? And <laughs> The thing's backfiring steam. And I'm like, but I love that he loves something that much. He loves cars more than I love puppies. Mm-hmm. Like this, he is 24-7. Yep. He's always been so nice. His wife, Nate Mavis, is, a, and I hate to say it, Jay, but she's a little more interesting than you. Just saying, <laughs> off stage, like, well. you want to go talk to Mavis for an hour or Jay. I'm going, Mavis is more, more range of activities I would be interested in. Uh-huh. And Jay would just go, why don't you let me get you a call and get into a new car? Because I like my Mercury Mariner, Jay. Yeah. Tita said he didn't even make us anymore. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't have told I you. Got it. What are you driving these days? <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I like about Jay. I knew when they were like, oh, they burned his face off and his hands off. He'll just fix it and go right back to doing what he was doing. Right. Um. He said, eight days later, I had a brand new face after he got all the, the mm-hmm. treatment at the place. Um, he said uh, he had second degree burns, some third degree burns, um, and it's be- and then they grafted stuff, and he said it's better than what was there before. He was in a hyperbaric oxygen thing. Um, despite the serious injuries, he seems to- he was down at the Comedy Magic Club like two weeks later because he works there every Sunday night in Hermosa. And then I saw the videos, and there's my friend Richard, and I'm like, oh, good. And he looks fine. I mean, it's amazing. He looks totally. But I also know Jay would be like, yeah, it looks weird, but who cares? Yeah. Like he would just still go to work. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really was an accident. That's how he was working underneath one of those steam engine cars. Now, believe me, Jay has a lot of normal cars, too. It's not like he only has those and he's that strange. He's just, you know, it's just to see somebody driving that through Beverly Hills for real. I'm like, why don't you get a dog and put flying goggles on both of you? Right. You're so strange. Um. He said, this is my favorite quote of the year. You have to joke about it. There's nothing worse than whiny celebrities. <laughs> if you joke about it, people laugh along with you. He had a bunch of jokes, but I applaud that. There is nothing worse than whiny celebrities. I'm just going to say Harry and Meghan. Right. 
I'll God. tell you. Well, and I, I can't, I'll do Harry and my thoughts on that next week. But what I will tell you is, if you can, go watch George and Tammy. Oh, it's, it's about George Jones and Tammy Wynette, and showtime. it's Showtime. But it's also this is where I'm like, what the fuck? It's on Paramount Plus, and then no, then it says Showtime. You didn't pay for the upgrade of that for this. I already paid for Showtime. I'm sure you have showtime. I'll help you. <sighs> you probably don't. took a lot of scooting around to find that show. <laughs> Just saying, a lot of bullshit, a lot of me yelling. You At my television, paid. You paid for a lot of- there's only two episodes out. I've paid for many things to be twice, three times, four times, because I get so frustrated, I don't give a shit. That's where I can waste my money. Then, damn it, that's where I'll waste my But the George and Tammy thing, I always, th- I always think when I'm watching the country ones, like, there's a lot of feralness in the old school country people, which is why I like them, which is why I believe what they sing versus the new age country people. Yeah. I don't buy it. You didn't live this life. Did these people? Feral. You know, this guy left home when he was seven. What? Yeah. Who does that? Okay. Yeah, he ran away when he was 12. She was out in a cotton field picking. Anyway, tell me when I was from Mississippi. Just Poverty gone wild, and then they're feral, and then they become famous, and then everything becomes a complete train wreck. And I even know some comedians that still fit into this. They're rare anymore, rare, um, but they're there, out there. Um, and I love that because then I believe whatever they're saying. I believe every word of it. Mm-hmm. Well, what I love to do is I always like to think of Europeans watching these shows. <laughs> Because they may have their own brand of feral. I don't know. Like, I've been to Ireland a seven bazillion times, and I don't really know what they would consider their brand of feral to be. But I know I've never met anyone like George Jones. No. Not the Southern. No. <laughs> it's, fun, though. it's a special brand of feral. It's our brand. So I would love to see if there's, like, a European brand of where you just go, wow, you had no leader. Yep. You've been running on rails, you know, literally riding rail. Like it's, but the acting, I know that guy doesn't look like him, which bothered me a little bit in the beginning, but I'm totally over it. He's wonderful. And so is Jessica Chastain. She's playing Tammy. Everybody in it's great. It's just, and we're only two episodes in and he's already like punched people and set shit on fire. Do you think it's as good as Monarch? Monarch got canceled. (laughs) My friend Bob Reed, who's a fancy person, sent me the text <laughs> first. And I was like, oh, Bob, you're killing me. Don't send me any more bad news from California. Um, yeah, you know, it was a guilty pleasure. I love it. I, it's so bad. It's Well, it's good bad. It's trying to do throwback. It just didn't go throwback enough. No. <laughs> if you want to do, like, you know, Dallas, it's a soap opera oh, like Dallas. it's a country you could do it but you gotta go yeah whatever. We should watch Dallas I never watched all of Dallas because oh. it was on Friday nights and I had to work so my parents would tell me what oh, happened I know how to find it. Oh, my um yeah. uh, wait I was gonna say go watch George and Tammy yep. um I'll figure out my top Christmas movies and I'll do Harry and Megan, if I can suffer through another episode. I'm not watching that. I just don't think you can say you're a victim when you're sitting in a $30 million mansion. Agreed. And you've really, really never had jobs. Nope. I mean, he could fly a helicopter. She was on, she was held a suitcase on a game show. Yep. And then suits. Yep. So you had a little acting deal going on. Mm-hmm. Sure, shit doesn't ma- merit $30 million. Nope. Where'd that come from? <laughs> and then the dichotomy, then they show, here's our chicken coop. And then they get on a private jet. Right. Well, that erases the free eggs. Yeah. You can't. No, you can't do it. You know who does it correctly? Ed Begley Jr. I know that sounds weird. Yeah. Remember him, the actor? Nope. Well, I would see him on his bicycle everywhere in L.A. What? Yes. Like, he, he, he rode his bicycle over, and then he powers his house. Like, he's off the grid, oh, all green. Ed I'm serious. Ed Begley Jr. If oh, you're yeah. If you're going to do it. Do it. Oh, he was cute. He's very cute. Yeah. But the in and out shit, I saw him at a post office once. I don't know the man. I'm just a fan. I just know him from TV. St. Elsewhere. St. Elsewhere, right. And I go, did you ride your bike here, sir? <laughs> well, Lou knows him from sir. some acting thing. And so 
I always like to go, well, I'm a friend of Lewis Black's. And then it clears me as not completely crazy, <laughs> mildly crazy. I go, did you ride your bike here over the hill? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's a long way. He said, but, you know, just save so much if just everyone would do it. And I was like, wow. yeah, well, this ain't even my post office, so don't get mad at me. I came here for something else, to pick up something else for somebody else. But no, I'm saying you can't say you're eco warriors when you're jumping on private jets, flying all around the earth, and the yeah. private jet takes you. You could get on Delta. You could get on Delta with the rest of us. You and you can. Yep. Your fa- you can get your security or whatever you want and go to LAX. They have the private entrance for the fanciest people. I've never even seen it, but I know it exists. I'm just saying there's too much with the Harry and Meghan thing. That's, But I will give it a chance. I will listen. But I don't understand once we're done bitching about the royal family, when we're truly done with our bitch fest, what now? What do you do? What do you two do as humans? What do you do? You raise fake chickens. She wants to be famous. She's never been famous. She wants to be famous, you think? A shitty actress and a fake princess. Oh, 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 battles. Mm -hmm. Canada, you guys get extra mad about all that stuff. Yeah, Yeah, because you didn't really kick them out. You still have one seat in your parliament. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen's off the money, though. She had to die, but whatever. (laughs) The queen's off the money. She's going to be replaced by a moose. (laughs) She should be replaced by a moose. (laughs) Or a beaver. Or a or Jan Arden. Oh, yes. Oh, God. How great would that be? Yeah. Or maybe, in due respect, Anne Murray first. Then Jan. Jan can wait till someone else dies. Jan's young enough. No. How about Gordon? Jan? Lightfoot. No, she'd be tall. Yeah. yeah. Wait, enough of the dudes. Terry Clark? Yeah. Little Terry could be honest. Terry Clark? Yeah. What about one of my comedian friends, Jeremy Hotz? <laughs> He's hilarious. Tom Green? Come on. You guys get overly angry about royalty, so I'm not even sure I'm going to allow you to speak on this, Paddles. Okay, that's no. fine. I have my own opinion. No, uh, we're going to do it next week. No, not the Christmas So show. you need to go to your house and watch no. some more Harry and no, Meghan. I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> Won't even watch for, for the podcast? No. Just to tell the people? No, I don't tell anything. I don't understand. Once the bitching's over, why are we still supposed to be interested? Right? <laughs> Tell me what you do. You have a fake chicken coop in Montecito. And I'm very familiar with Montecito because one of my friends, Mr. Ron Tatersell White, uh, earned a lot of money in his lifetime and bought a little place up there at one point, and I became part of the people. <laughs> <laughs> you drank on his deck with him. <laughs> well, I just saw what the rich people do, though. Yeah. I saw the private airport. Mm-hmm. I went to the San Ysidro Ranch and mm-hmm. sat at the bar with him. Yeah, not often. But really, I just went up there to golf and drink wine on Juan's deck. But I saw the M.O. of Montecito, and I am telling you, mark my words, Montecito, although it is gorgeous, and it's just stunningly perfect temperature-wise, those two, Harry and Meghan, will, grow, will tire of it, and they will leave because it's too goddamn boring. Well, Unless you golf, and like Ron's a golf addict, and I kind of am a semi-golf addict, uh-huh. And I'll go for a beach walk every day. Ron would not. I would. But there ain't enough people, things going on. Like, I ended up just going drinking in the Mexican part of town because there were people that were normal. Yeah, the rich people. Great taco The rich people don't come out of their houses. You just see the help. They don't talk. No. And I found the cool Mexican neighborhood by... um google and mexican food no and then i went down there right. and then i just started drinking with those guys we're normal people like teachers and you know guys who drive trucks normal people but where are you going on tour where am i going on tour i'm going to missouri missouri not on tour, not on tour. What are you doing for christmas? that's what i'm doing for christmas Great. yeah i'm super excited What's the plan for christmas? well the plan for one of the days is to go to um, the Clydesdales baby farm. Awesome. In, um, I think it's in uh, Boonville, Missouri. There's a, casino there. <laughs> there's a casino in Boonville. But more importantly, there's the Warm Springs Ranch, it's called. 
and it's the home to all baby Clydesdales. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh. And then they decorate the whole place, and you get to um, hang out with the Clydesdales. That sounds yeah. awesome. And uh, I don't know. I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Matter of fact, I need to call my sister right now and see if she did that. She's supposed to buy tickets. Sometimes I, I don't trust the younger <laughs> siblings to really do that in time. And then they'll be like, oh, my God, I forgot. And then it went on. It's also the... <laughs> um, so that. But that's not until next week. Um, all right, termites. So your assignment is, if you really care, go watch George and Tammy. I wish they'd release them all. Why are there only two released? This is not fair to addicts. You're just taunting addicts. Christmas well, Christmas movies, fine, but I could binge eight George and Tammy's like that. Yeah. They won't let me. Where, uh, where am I going on tour? I don't really know. Florida starts it. No, West, West Virginia, Charles, Charlestown, West Virginia. Tons of Florida. Though, yeah, lots of Florida in January, which would be great. I'll swoop in on Jack and Vicky, my parents. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Fort Pierce. Yep, Springs. Fort Pierce, Coral Springs, St. Pete. Pete, Fort Myers, Fort Myers. Orlando. Orlando, the Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. That's a super fun one. Parks Casino. Parks Casino in Ben Salem, yeah. And Sorry. the Ryman in Nashville. I'm very, very super excited about the Ryman in Nashville. Yeah. Um, that's just like a you – can, and you know what? As, especially because I'm old enough to know, you never know if you'll get that gig again. You can't ever count on that. Nope. So every like some, you just go, well, that's fine. Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, I'll be back, or I won't be back. Who cares? Right. But or there'll be a different casino somewhere. You know, if if I'm in, I don't know, Reno. Right. Pfft, you just get shuffled around. You don't really become attached. But the Ryman is super special. So Nashville, check that out and. People have asked about St. Louis. It'll be the fall, guys. Yep. Not in deer season. Not in deer season and not if anyone's having a baby around that time. Those, that's what I'm told. Could you not book St. Louis? <laughs> well, deer season's two weekends. Good work weekends for me in November. Uh -huh. And then, well, who's having babies? Right. And let me know. And you know what? Why don't you just have that baby on your own? Let me know. Send me a picture of it. <laughs> have fun. Post it on the facial book. I'll send it a present. Okay. Yeah. All right, Terabytes, that's your assignment. I'm telling you, George and Tammy, worth every minute. I'm going to do the Harry and Meghan work for you. Unless you're super into it. I want to know what movies they're watching for Christmas. What movies are you guys watching for Christmas? Yep, holiday movies. Holiday movies. I'm going to go through my list, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you some uh, of my favorite. Now, they're all in the cheesy category, right. so don't expect Academy Award things, okay? Nope. It's all ridiculous. It's saving Christmas tree farms and saving... Point, point stuff. <laughs> I'm waiting for a cookie factory to go down. And then somebody's got to come and go, my mother and father have owned this cookie factory in in Blue Springs, Gupaha. We've lived here forever. We've sold cookies to the town folk. And now the factory's closed and there's no one to buy our cookies. What are we going to do? We're going to turn it into a murder factory. Whoa. Whoa, the ID channel. All right, I'm getting crazy. All right, Termites, everything's shaking a little bit. Are we having a, is there an earthquake? There's no, I didn't even drink it all. You know why? I put too much ice in my cup. I ruined it. Well, I drank this beer and then I drank half a Miller Lite. So there you go. Yeah, you got it, termites. Ready? 